do do. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the inaugural Be Fiercely Courageous show. I'm your ho host, hi, uh, intuitive life strategist, Jennifer Bingham Hart. If you have not heard of me, uh, welcome. Uh, Be Fiercely Courageous is a show dedicated to inspiring you from the stories and experiences shared, how amazingly resilient you are, and how you can uh, take the tools that you learn and bring that into your own life. And today I have the most special guest. Um, she is, I'm so proud that she's my first guest, uh, Melissa Rodriguez. Um, I've met Melissa Rodriguez through some interesting uh, Facebook online communities and we connected right away and I'm super excited to have her on. Uh, she has uh, the website Command Your Confidence and she's also can be found by the same name on facebook.com command your confidence uh, melissa is a master of personal evolution and former confidence coach she started command your confidence as a way to help women define their version of confidence and the process uncovered a deeply rooted desire to go beyond the surface of what makes someone lose their confidence as she explored her own truth she began to discover just how evolutionary she was and mastered the skills to continue that expansion. Melissa, welcome. I'm so excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share what evolution uh, or personal evolution is all about and how to manage your confidence led to this amazing process. Um, so, you know, from like beginning to end and just how it's all unfolded has been like just amazing. So I'm excited to share it. Well, please. Well, uh, because we're all about being fiercely courageous, what do you have a specific point or multiple points? Because well, obviously you're evolutionary, like mm -hmm. everyone's pretty much in an evolution. They have probably multiple points where they're feeling like that's the moment where I got an aha or that's the moment where I fell down. <laughs> so yeah, do you have any of those that would you, you'd like to uh, kind of give us a background type? Yeah, thing? absolutely. Okay. So my evolutionary moment um, came out of a breakup. So um, I know you've followed my story and you've seen the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I was in a relationship for um, you know a little over a year and the person that I was with left me for another woman. And it was somebody from his past that he had been dealing with these emotions with for like a long period of time. Um, before our relationship, during our relationship, like at the end of our relationship. So, you know, that for me was such a, like a pivotal moment because it was a moment that changed not only the way I looked at relationships, but the way I looked at myself. Right. Um, so in like the month following that breakup, I started to just look like inward and realize where did it all go wrong to the point where like he was just like, you know what? I don't even care about her feelings anymore. And I'm just going to walk away because it's really hard to face the fact that somebody is literally walking away from you without giving any regard to your feelings, to your emotions, to, you know, like what you want to do. And they're just making this, the decision for themselves and saying, I'm walking away and I kind of don't care. So it's really hard to deal with that and, and kind of look back at it and say, is this something that really just happened out of the blue or is this something that's been building up for a while and I just didn't see the signs? Um, and for me, it turned out that it was the second that the signs were just always there and I ignored my intuition and I ignored the signs from, you know, the universe, from friends, from everyone. And in that hiding behind the story that I created for myself, I ended up in this situation where I was just like, okay, now here I am alone moving back home and just without really like any ground to stand on. Right. So um, when I started Command Your Confidence, like it was because I didn't have the confidence in myself. So I realized that my confidence had just gone out the window throughout this whole relationship, throughout the whole process. Um, in relationships before him too, my confidence just wasn't there. I hadn't had it for a while. So this became my journey to find my confidence again and when I shared my story on live videos, people were like, oh my God, I'm going through the same thing. Or how, how did you do it? Because I don't know where to go. And I'm like, all right, so how many people are actually going through this confidence thing where they just don't have it anymore or they lost their, their confidence or they're feeling insecure? And I realized that so many women were in this state of not being able to define confidence or not being able to get it back. So it 
my idea was to create a customary process in which every woman defined it for themselves what confidence looks like That's and awesome. i decided to explore my own process because what is confidence to me so i decided to be my own example of the process that i was creating okay. and so <clears throat> for me i was just like okay what is confidence to you what is it that you feel you need to embody again and in the entire process the did like the deeper that i dug the more things that i uncovered about myself and i began to evolve into not so much a new person but i started to peel back the layers and i started to reveal what was behind this mask and this disguise that i had put on for the world and so the more i unpeeled those layers the more i realized that now i'm closer to being myself than i ever have been in the past and i got not only the confidence back but i'm my most authentic self today than i ever have been so it definitely transformed my programs to do the same thing and it all is started with what i call a pivotal moment and i call it pivotal instead of defining even though it is a defining moment the reason why i call it pivotal is because when you think of like pivoting like in sports terms when you pivot you kind of change your direction slightly so that's what the evolution process begins at that's where it begins in that moment where you're changing direction slightly and you're finding that process again so it's it's basically like a redirect in a sense and that's where i come in because i help people change that direction and follow that path so that's why i decided to call that moment a pivotal moment so. can i ask was there other stuff like you said like the breaking point was that breakup really like that was like the last straw in uh, previous relationships or throughout your life did you have a, you said that um it you had lost your confidence a long time ago did you do you remember when you actually lost it um <clears throat> or i i think i really started to lose it um more in high school like in high school i as much as i like seemed confident um you know high school like you you just have your bullies and you have your people that are willing to just tear you down and tell you you can't be this or you shouldn't be this or here's what society wants you to be now you're going to go to college you have to do this that and the other and that's where the beginnings of that breakdown of my confidence started and in college i got a little bit of it back because i started um i joined the radio station and i started a show and i was also the news director so my voice was everywhere like i was on the interviews and i was doing the commercials for the news show and i was you know like i was teaching other people how to do it too so as the director my voice was prominent on like the news segments for radio so it was definitely awesome and that's where i first started to get my voice back again but then outside of college i didn't get a job in radio and i didn't get a job in television so i was stuck in retail and i was stuck again in an environment that creates these insane standards and wants you to be someone that you're not and they have all these expectations and it's like if you want to be a manager you have to be this you have to be cutthroat you have to be competitive you have to you know be willing to say no to the customer or say no to you know like your associates you have to put your foot down and it's all these rules and they're invisible rules that you have to abide by in order to you know get to the top and then when you get to the top it's lonely because you tore down so many people to get there mm -hmm. that again people don't see you as oh and confident empowered manager they see you as the bitch that walked all over me to get to where she is so mm -hmm. <laughs> like things like that still tear down at your confidence and then if you are in a relationship with somebody doesn't un who under who doesn't understand that retail takes time you have days where you're working till 11 or 12 midnight you have days where you have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning so time is hard time management is hard and there are people who don't understand that you know i did the best i could to try and make time i always tried to work around my schedule to you know be present for somebody else but then it's like where does that leave time for me and or did that person put in the same amount of effort and a lot of the times they did it so they wanted you to bend backwards 
They wanted you to create the time, but they weren't creating the time with you. So just over the years, it's, it wasn't so many like big moments. It was little moments that were knocking down the doors. And then that big moment happened and that's where it all just Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember, I guess, um, sorry for a little bit of noise, but um, it, in that uh, bottom point, I guess, with mm-hmm. the breakup, where did you see, because obviously you came through a vibrant, confident woman now, so mm-hmm. there must have been a spot inside that says, no, this is not going to take me. I'm not sure if it was the same day. <laughs> Just like, oh, yeah. But um, that, that time for resilience, the time where you found yourself as being, oh, I, I'm stronger than this. Mm-hmm. Who, can you share some of uh, any enlightenment that you can share with the audience of how they can kind of maybe recognize those moments even because um, sometimes we for- lose them and then mm-hmm. get, oh, it's a process, the journey. It's not just like, woohoo, I'm totally confident. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Um, there were a lot of things that led to that awakening. Like, it started at first with um, me joining the group. Um, I joined Infinite Receiving, and I also was, you know, following Jen Scalia and a lot of her new things. But um, more Infinite Receiving led to like it created the safe space for me to actually like start my own healing process and be present when I wanted to be and also stand back when I needed to. So um, I remember the first few days that I was there, everybody was just like, what's your story? What's your story? And I'm like, I don't really feel ready to share my story just yet because it's still like raw and it's still like, you know, it's kind of like throwing salt in the moon there for a second, you know, but I was like, I I didn't want to share my story right away. And then, you know, one day somebody was just like, you know what, we just want to hear it. Like, just, just tell us, like, share your story. And Maru said the same thing. She was like, don't be afraid to share. You may find that the reason why so many people are asking is because they need to hear it. And there's something there in it for them. And when I started going through the breakup and when everything happened, everybody was like, oh, don't post it on Facebook or, oh, don't share. You know, they were like, go out, have fun, go to the bars, get drinks and, you know, let people see like you're happy and that it's not affecting you. And I'm like, why would I want to do that though? That's like, it's, it's again, disguising a situation and making it look like something that it's not like, why would I want to mask my pain when clearly I'm going through it for what, for me to go home and cry every night? Like, I might as well cry anyway and just cry on a video. So, so like, that's what I did. I cried in the group. I cried on a video. I expressed everything that was going on in my head. And I was just open and just, like, I let it out. And it was the opposite of what everybody told me to do. But I knew it was the right thing to do. And all of a sudden, every single one of those women who were asking me what my story was, it was like Maru said, they were asking for a reason because they were going through it too, or they were experiencing something similar that they needed to know how, how to deal with it. And the best answer that I was able to give them was just be open and tell people like somebody is going to message you and say, I can help you. Or somebody is going to say, I'm here for you. Let's have a chat. And the more I actually faced it, rather than walking away for it from it was when I was able to start healing it. So being open as much as people were telling me not to be open was actually the best solution. Was it challenging? I mean, we've had offline conversations, so I know uh, the answer to this, but the audience does not know yet. So I'm like, was it challenging, especially your family and friends who are definitely telling you the opposite of what your intuition is saying, be vulnerable it's scary to be vulnerable, but let me, let me try let me mm-hmm. try in a safe environment. Cause obviously if you're doing it in infant receiving, if people don't know on, on the broadcast, it's an amazing group of people who are learning to expand um, their capacity to receive. And that doesn't mean just money. It means um, receive life basically and receive it in a way uh, where you're um, not just exploring yourself, but also exploring how the world and you interact. And, um, 
so besides that lo location, were there any other places where you felt safer was just on your Facebook page or groups or, and how did you navigate the family and like, cause it's hard to go against the grain. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is. And so, and this is going to be the most honest answer that I can give. It's very challenging and you're going to lose a lot of people along the way. <clears throat> you're going to lose a lot of people. And you have to be okay with that because if you're not okay with losing the people who are not going to be there for you, you won't be able to evolve the way you need to. I lost a lot of friends, a lot of people that were in my social circles that have been for years and years and years walked away or stopped communicating or pulled back. And like, you know, they, they weren't even there for the videos. And all the new friends that I had made through infinite receiving were present on each and every one of my videos. So the people who I thought would be there to support me and hear the story and hear what really happened to their best friend or their so-called best friend weren't there to hear what happened. So it's like, you want to know what happened, but yet I'm telling you what happened openly and you're look, you're not there to hear the story. So I, ended up facing the fact that there were a lot of people in the process who were going to criticize the story, who didn't want to hear the story, who couldn't understand what was going on. Um, like I had a family member who was always commenting, like discouraging remarks on my videos wow. and making like really stupid and immature jokes. So, you know, things like that, it was, you have to deal with it all and you have to, you know, accept the fact that you're going to, forcefully block some people, you're going to unintentionally lose some people, but you're also going to gain uh, the right people. And that's what I did. So in, in letting go of the people who couldn't understand it, I was able to invite people who did. And I was able to invite people who showed that unconditional love and support. And they were like, hey, even though I don't know what you're going through, oh my God, you're freaking amazing for sharing. Thank you because somebody I know is going through it and I'm going to send them your way. So it opened up more doorways for me because even if that person wasn't directly going through it, they knew someone who was, and they were like, you've got to talk to Melissa because Melissa can tell you the ins and outs and she's going to be honest, you know? So it was, it was very, very challenging learning that I had to let go. But then when I made that realization, it was easy to do it. Sadly, it was easy to do it, but more, it was definitely much better. They weren't, well, I guess being honest, mm -hmm. that means they have to be honest too. And if they're not ready to be honest with themselves in their own lives and their own, whatever they're going through, it doesn't have to be a breakup per se, but whatever, whatever they're going through, if you're being honest and that makes people uncomfortable, because, oh shit, she's honest and she's yeah. being vulnerable. And I don't know what to do with that. And that's why they go away. And you clear the space for the right energies to come in, the right people to support you. And I'm so happy because you're thriving now. And I'm, uh, it's amazing to see. Uh, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure everybody that you work with is very excited about it too, because it's, it's not just working with, but like, the inspiration that you, everybody needs to know that they are related to and mm -hmm. that stories give that um, opportunity to others, which um, is super important. That's why I asked to do the show. It's like to know that you're not alone and you will find the right tribe of people and you will be held by those people, even if it doesn't look like the way you wanted it to originally, because I'm sure yeah. family and friends, you're like, uh, hello. I've right. known you since fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, uh, you didn't go, you went away. So, <laughs> so that's awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing that because it's really important for people to get that. Sometimes the process is definitely not easy and being honest, like you may lose something mm -hmm. you'll gain too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So has there anything, uh, tools or tricks or tool or like a sense of a humor or things that you used during that process to, to kind of uh, 
get back to center or get back to yourself because that's really where that confidence comes in. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of tools that I've used. Um, like journaling certain things was like easier to do. Like there were times where I just had so much in my brain that I was just like, all right, you know what? The easiest thing to do is just maybe dump it all on paper, you know, and just write out every single thought and every single, like every emotion that I was feeling. And so there were times where I was just angry and I would write down like just the words that were making me angry or the triggers or the person. And you find that a lot of the times you're not even forming full sentences. You're literally just putting like a million things on a piece of paper. You could watch a video and just be like, you know what? I hate that video. I hate that person that's in that video. I don't know why I just do. And you write it out and just like, that makes no sense whatsoever, you know? (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, your personality has to come through like the the biggest part of the process for me was letting my personality come through again and letting it just be as natural as it can be you know so when i would when i would do my videos i would just say like those silly little puns i love puns puns are my favorite thing in the world so like anytime i yeah I actually don't have a pun, but like I am the master of finding puns online. And then whenever I'm just like, oh, I could go for a good pun. Like there it is on Facebook, just like the funniest thing ever. I'm like, this is great. It's just gold, you know? So um, puns are definitely helpful. Finding your own sense of humor, just being yourself. And also my two biggest tools. And the first one is being somebody else for a day. Like the alter ego exercise is like my favorite thing to do because you get to play dress up, you know, like take all the things that you would never do, or maybe wear something that you would never wear, um, a color you would never wear, makeup you would never wear, or a quality that is the complete opposite of you. So if you're like quirky and bubbly all the time, then, you know, just kind of be a little like say no to everybody or give a little sass or give a little attitude. You know, somebody asks you for a favor, like, no, sorry, I don't have time for that. You know, like just be a little, (laughs) be a little the opposite. Um, But sometimes creating a new look for yourself is the most fun thing to do. So like I would just normally with makeup, I like to go neutral and my cousin works for Mac cosmetics. So I had like this whole tin of makeup that I never used from her. And one day I was just like, I'm going to play with colors today. And I'm going to take every single bright color that she's given me and I'm just going to put it together. And that's what I did. And I just put together a look um, with all these colors that she had given me that I had never used. So all of a sudden that makeup container became one of my tools, you know? And then... My other biggest tool was the book, The Alchemist. Oh, yeah. And that book changed the course of the direction for Command Your Confidence. And that book led to the idea of evolution because in the book, they talk about your personal legend, your personal evolution. And I, I started to put the pieces together and I was like, so evolution is a thing here. And it's the prominent message that's in this book for me. And what I found so interesting about The Alchemist is that I had another friend who was reading it at the same time that I was. And his message was about time, how life gives you a certain amount of time, you know, to take action. And if you don't take action, don't consider it a missed opportunity, because if it was really meant for you, it's going to come along again. So I, I found it so interesting how we're two different people reading the same book at the same time, and we're getting two different messages, um, which also increased my theory that personal evolution is indeed personal. It, it's different for everyone who experiences it. And so I was like, he's got a message about time. I've got a message about like personal evolution. So clearly it's constant and evolution is constant. And it's different for everyone. So that ended up being like the platform for command your confidence turning into something bigger. Now, what would be, I mean, 
would you say, what do you feel is you're most proud of in terms of command your confidence and, and your journey as a whole? Because I think it's important to acknowledge yourself and to help other people acknowledge themselves. Mm-hmm. So what do you feel most proud of? In- I feel most proud of the programs that I created and it took me a long time to do them. And when I started on, you know, the whole idea of personal evolution, I wanted to turn my programs from just being about confidence into about that aspect of it. Um, And my favorite, one of the two programs is the four week program. And it's the, who are you program? And the reason why it's become my favorite is because I've always hated the question, who are you? Like when somebody asks you, who are you? Like, who are you in the world? Or who are you in life? Or who are you to yourself? It's always the hardest question to answer. Because again, it requires you to go deep within yourself. It requires you, it requires you to, to, I mean, people can give a, a straight answer. I've had it in, you know, retail all the time or in life. Somebody asks you, oh, who are you? Oh, I'm Melissa Rodriguez. I'm a manager at so-and-so. Or, you know, I work here and this is what I do. Like, this is my nine to five. This is my life. Um, that's, not the, that's not the answer that we're looking for here. You know, <laughs> like we're looking for something deeper. We want to know who are you? Not what you do. Not, you know, your goals, your, your visions. Those are a part of it. But who are you? So the question that I hated the most the question that I never want to look into, the question that I never wanted to answer became the platform for my program because it requires you to do the same. And if that's how you take that journey, you look inside yourself and you discover who you are. Um, So that's the thing that I'm most proud of because not only can I answer the question myself, but I'm here to help others answer that question for themselves as well. That's That's wonderful because it is an abstract question and a lot of people are afraid of abstracts because we like to hold on to labels and hold on to things um, concretely because that's how we navigate the world. But navigating ourselves, how to figure out, oh, wow, I have to define this for myself. Mm -hmm. Scary. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) I'm so happy you're proud of it because I know you help so many people by um, that process of being able Mm -hmm. to get more because I think we always need a hand with that. Like sometimes, obviously, because your transformation, you did a lot of that internal work where you had tools like mm-hmm. and support and that sort of thing. And that was a crucial for your transformation and evolution. Mm-hmm. Now, it's definitely important that people have a, a guide, but also know to check in with themselves and be completely honest with themselves. And that's why the support person is there to be like, be being honest. Right. Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> not the nine to five like mm-hmm. we are cultured to say that is uh it really is um what you do mm-hmm. and we're like you said there's we're so we're so much more nuanced than that mm-hmm. what is your favorite thing could you tell me who are you like I love that question yeah now I have to ask that myself <laughs> oh no that's question because it's really It is. It it has to to go deeper. Yeah. So So who are you, Melissa? (laughs) Who I am is, like I said, I'm a master of personal evolution because I have the courage and confidence to go deep within myself, to go deep within my mind, my body, and my soul, and uncover answers and hidden messages that most people don't see or that I didn't even see for myself. You know, I'm a person who loves with such a huge capacity to love. You know, I have this large capacity to love people, places, and things. I don't just love like a certain type of person. I love a lot of people, like, you know, new people that I come across, old people that I reconnect with, places. Like I love the mountains. I love, you know, the beach. I love like earthier things. I love, you know, non-conventional things or, you know, the city lights and, and, and again, like, you know, people, places, things like I just, that's who I am. Like, like you know, um, right. Lover of life. And then I'm also like a nerd at heart because I enjoy Marvel comic books. Like that's my weakness. Like give me anything Marvel. Like I'm so excited. My movie list this year consists of Thor, 
Um, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, like I'm so excited about Thor. I'm so excited about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Like those are, that is my movie list for this year. X-Men Apocalypse was amazing. Like you can't, you can't tell me otherwise. A lot of people didn't like it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I loved it. Like it, it was awesome. Um, so I am a Marvel comic nerd at heart like that's those one of the things that I who's your favorite character? my favorite character I've always loved Rogue as much as yeah and she's so like not a lot of people see her you know and what I love about her the most is that she's that person that's she absorbs the characters of other people, you know, like she touches somebody, she gains their powers. But the, the sad thing about her story is that not only did she gain people's powers for a temporary amount of time, she started to gain their personalities and their memories. So she had to deal with that in a way. And Rogue is like the story of what it's like to lose yourself in the qualities of others. And that's what I love about her because she's had that story and that's the story that everybody goes through of what happens when you inherit the qualities of somebody else or when you take on the qualities and memories of someone else, you lose yourself in that process. So Rogue embodies the strength of how to overcome that and how to stay true to yourself amidst all of that, you know, that integration that she had to deal with. So protect her. And protect her. She loves. My yeah. Favorite. Uh, I think because I used to be a Marvel fan, I haven't watched a movie in ages. So now you're inspiring me to go to a movie <laughs> for sure, especially Thor because he's hot. But like, <laughs> like um, I loved Storm growing up. I always related to Storm because mm -hmm. um, there was a, she could command the weather in in such a powerful way. Um, I don't know why. I, I think I had a thing for Forge. <laughs> 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 big early <laughs> men from the future i don't know we'll see what happens with that but like, really, i'm not sure what the symbolism of my just like connection to uh storm is mm -hmm. but uh that's an interesting i have to kind of dig deeper on that one because you gave me some food for thought because i didn't see rogue um in the same way but i do see it now so thank you because that's because it's all everywhere it right. really is everybody does uh, at certain times take on the personalities of others uh we see it all work in relationships in mm -hmm. life family systems especially yep. see, um taking pieces of other people to feel like we're going to fit in or to feel like we belong um and then also how does that hurt us when we do that and not being our true center so i love that i wouldn't have ever pieced that's awesome I <laughs> Thank you, Rogue, and thank you, Mel. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, so? No, yeah, it's awesome that you just said all of that, too, because that's what my eight-week program is. Like, you actually just walked right into it. Oh, sweet. I didn't um, know. <laughs> <laughs> the eight-week program that I have is called Beyond the Influence. Like, and that's really, uh, it's, it's evolution beyond the influence. Um, and that's what we explore. We explore those external influences. So whereas my four week program explores the internal, um, the eight week explores the external. And it's exactly what you said, like family, friends, colleagues, society, what has it done to us and how has it tried to mold us into a certain way and how can we evolve beyond those external influences? So you just also like, open that door and that's exactly what I do. <laughs> I channel because I, 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 I have to admit I didn't research a lot. So <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm very intuitive. So that helped. I'm thrilled that it connects and it was a good segue. Now, um, sorry, I'm kind of looking at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So everyone, it's my first broadcast. I'm very excited. Um, uh, since we talked about uh, your Marvel, uh, you know, connection and fascination, are there any other things about your personality in terms of like superheroes? Like you connect with Rogue. Mm -hmm. um, how, how you've obviously overcome what Rogue has kind of done. Mm -hmm. by not influencing or taking the influence of others as your own like you've been able to separate the two mm -hmm. um, what you said you have your four-week program your eight-week program um 
is there any specific people do you prefer to go through one direction or another do you or is it kind of like you have a, a process to see where they best fit for you guys for supporting them yeah i i have like the discovery call process um so i do have you know like a one hour call where i, I connect with people and get you know at least like the surface of their story so that i can get to know what's going on in their heads um, and it's so interesting that you asked like the type of people, because when I first started, I found that again, it was about women who were experiencing, you know, the insecurities and confidence issues, women who were just out of a breakup or women who lost themselves in their relationships, like the same thing. But the more I did my live videos on, you know, my personal page, the more I found that men were actually joining in on the live videos. And I was getting a lot of comments and feedback from, from guys, like guy friends. And I'm just like, huh, I may have uh, fallen into something here because guys experience it too. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, guys experience the issues too. And so I think I, I decided to stick with more of an age group rather than male or female. Um, and the times where I've really found we begin to struggle with confidence the most is like early 20s, um, you know, like starting at 21. Um, my mom just offered me food. I can't turn away food at this point, you know, it's like. Yeah, when, when food's on the table, you're kind of like. Mm, okay, but <laughs> one minute, one minute, right? <laughs> it's like just, just save me a plate, save me a plate. <laughs> um, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but like, I found that you know, like the college years, basically, you know, like you're you're 21, you're fresh out of college, and you're beginning this brand new process of finding yourself, and then 30 is the new 20, man, like. At 30, we're going through this evolution phase again, and we're going through this process of, did I really accomplish all I wanted to do in my 20s? And what am I going to do in the next 10 years? You know, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like that. And then the 35, it's that same thing. It's like, all right, I've, I'm already five in five years into that part of the decade where I have to decide, am I on the right path? So my age group kind of falls between like 21 and 35. Yes, it's a large age group, but at the same time, it's an age group that goes through so much that the evolution is constant in that in that area. So that's wonderful. That's I am. You have the you live through. So obviously, that's, um, and you've been through all those ages. So <laughs> <laughs> you survived. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Um, is there anything you want to offer the audience? Um, today that you would uh, want uh, them to like how you can support them I I would I mean I'm here to offer my support overall so um, you know like that's that's what I'm here to do but at the same time I am opening the doors for anybody who wants to just have that chat and to like scratch the surface and see if this is something that they really want to explore because it's an amazing process and as you said I've gone through it and you've watched me go through it. And so mm -hmm. it's a process that is undeniable and it's a process that works. It really works. And I am my own example of how it works, you know? Um, so I, I would definitely invite somebody or everyone to, to at least book the chat. And if you find mm -hmm. it's not for you or you find you're not ready for it, that's okay. As, as long as you're honest with yourself about that, that part, you know? If you say, hey, I'm not quite ready for this, okay, fine, we can explore it when you're ready. Um, and then, you know, if we have that chat and you're like, I wanna know more and I wanna start with, you know, who are you? Which is where I recommend everybody starts. Okay. I recommend everybody starts with who are you because again, it's the hardest question to answer um, and it's really the most prominent question to answer um, and it's where it begins. So if nothing else, I recommend people start there. Okay, and where can you find that? Where can they find that? They can find that on my website. Um, I just, re you know, revamped that section um, okay. to have the details on, you know, the Who Are You program. Okay. Um, and it's also, I will be posting more details about it on my Facebook page, the Command Your Confidence page. 
at the end of the day. So Wonderful. the updates I made to the website, I'm going to transfer there. Wonderful. And I'll have the show notes, but everybody, you can go to commandyourconfidence.com. And I believe it's in the, the program section. Program section, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then you can make a decision there. And Melissa will also have it on her Facebook page. So never fret. You are always taken care of here. And uh, you will definitely figure out who you are and how to... <laughs> <laughs> be like rogue or if I, be like rogue in her most beneficial self <laughs> That's her, you know your desired so um awesome melissa i am so excited to have you and thank you for being my first guest you are amazing thank are you. any anything uh you would like to say before we uh sign off um the other the only other thing like i would like to add is when you said you know like how rogue embodies a special you know like symbolism to me mm -hmm. the one thing that i encourage people to do is find your magic too because everybody it, you you said it yourself you were also always drawn to a certain character like think about that superhero that you were drawn to and why you were drawn to them it means that there's something magical inside of you that you're relating to that person like that person may have the power that you want or that person may have something in them a quality in them that you're seeing within yourself or that's trying to be uncovered. So there's a, there's a magic or a superpower within everybody that we just kind of need to uncover it and figure out what it is. So I encourage everybody to find that magic and find that superpower. Um, you know. <laughs> because we, everyone has a, more than one superpower, mm -hmm. but definitely like it's that self-reflection we all, uh, I think at times have a hard time doing, but mm -hmm. thank you for helping us uncover that. And I'm definitely going to do my homework. I promise <laughs> I will put it on your page. And it's like, I know why I love a uh, storm so much <laughs> now, <laughs> but I have to dig it, dig into it. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, the be, be fiercely courageous community is so honored. Uh, I'm sure. And I can't wait to hear more about your journey. And, um, Anybody who wants to follow our community, we can go to Be Fiercely Courageous uh, and can hop on the Fiercely Courageous Mastermind Facebook group. And all the links will be below in the show notes on my webpage and uh, I'll spread it across the channels of YouTube and uh, uh, Melissa will have her ability to do the same. And I and this will also be converted to a podcast. So all of you listening um, will have be able to enjoy and reap all of the all the goodies from this uh, broadcast. So thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.